Hello everybody, welcome back once again. And today we're going to be doing the inverse of a draft that I've recently done where I could not have a draft pick that was younger than the previous pick. They could be the same age, but they could not be younger. So basically every time I went up a year of age, the bar kept going up. I said that like Seamus, the bar. We don't just set the bar, we are the bar. But anyways, today we're instead of going up, we're going to be going down. So once I draft a player, I cannot pick anybody that is older than them. It's my thought that this is going to be more difficult than the inverse, but I guess we'll find out. And also the inverse, well, I won't say anything. You should go check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. And on that note, let's find out who we're going to be using. It is going to be Smashville. How many times do I have to tell you, Jabroni? You think he would understand by now, but apparently not. Let's say we get pick number 18. I don't think we're going to get a high pick two times in a row, but who has any idea? Wow. that That's probably the worst possible thing you could have done to me. Because look at this. Look at this. This is outrageous. I really want to take Crosby because, to be honest, I am a Caps fan. I'm sure you guys know that, but it's my opinion that he is the best player of all time. Ovi's the best goal scorer of all time. That is my opinion, obviously. Actually, my friend just sent me a stat about Crosby, too. Apparently, there's only two active NHL players that have finished every single season they've played with point a game or better, and it's Crosby and McDavid. But I think just for the fact that he's 35, so it gives us that extra one little age there, I'll have to go with Ovechkin. So, yeah, 9.5 milli. Sign me up. We can't take Patrice because he's 36, but we can take Malkin. And he is a 90 overall centerman. That would be an outrageous first line. And I am here for it. And on that note, I'm going down to 34 because I am taking Christoph Letang. All right, I'm going back up to 35. No, I'm just kidding. I can't do that, obviously. But I am, however, going to go down to 33. David Perron, him and Ovechkin are both listed as left wingers and they both shoot right. But anyway, that will be our first line. And don't forget, we have Letang as well. 32. I feel like we're dropping much faster than we went up in the other one. Speaking of 32, Kalorn. Don't mind if I do. I'm debating between Ranta and Pavel, but just because we can stay at 32 and there might be another forward I want to take, I'm going to take Ranta for now. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with Ranta. We're gonna have to take some seriously budgeted picks, but Voracek will be my next selection for this team. Paola appeared in the last draft, and he's appearing in this one as well. Nate Schmidt will keep us at 30, stop us from dropping below the 3-0 so far. That will be a left-handed defenseman. I'm gonna try to not draft too many right-handed defensemen this time, which I seem to be very good at doing. We kind of have the opposite problem as last time, though. Last time I wasn't taking enough defensemen, or sorry, not. it's not even related to defensemen. Welcome to the team, David Savard. But last time, I was taking a lot of very small contracts and we had nothing but cap space for the last few picks. This time, it's going to be literally the opposite. You know what? It's going to be a big skip, but I'm going down to 27. Barabanov's making another appearance. Scott Lawton, 3 million. Yeah, it's going to have to do. Labushkin, he is a right-handed defenseman, which means my next defenseman has to be left-handed. Hopefully, I don't screw this up. Susie would be perfect. So we could get Labushkin and Susie to be our last defensive pair. And then we just have to worry about offense and a backup goal. All right, Carson, let's get it done. He's a six foot five defensive defenseman. He's a big boy. Wow, we really don't have many options for goalies. I thought we were gonna have more than this. I could take Dreger, but again, our cap space is looking not phenomenal. Maybe I'll go down to 26 and take Cal, who's making 800K. Yeah, let's let's do it. I think that's our best bet. David Camp, 1.5. That's very doable. 26 years of age. All right, David, I see you. What player are you? You're a two-way forward. Phenomenal. Welcome to the squad. We have three selections remaining. $8 million, and we're at 26. Another centerman, but we could easily just put one of the centers on the wing. So I'm going to take Jason Dickinson to be a center, quote-unquote, for our team. Although he probably will not be playing center. Maybe he will. Zach Sanford and Dominic. I think I'm going to go with Zach Sanford for this pick. 79 overall grinder. 80 discipline is a grinder. I like that. $2 million, which gives us a decent amount of cap for our next pick. So let's make it happen here with Zach Sanford. I could take Fisher, he's 24, but there was a left winger that caught my eye that I would like to select, and that is gonna be Brendan Lemieux. I already think this team is gonna be worse than our last team, but 
Again, you never know. We got a better goalie this time. We have the best goal scorer in over chicken. And he's going to be playing with Malkin, which is just stupid. So there's a draft summary. Let's go put these lines together and see what we have here in Smashville. I'm really hoping for at least some decent line chemistry. It doesn't have to be great. It doesn't even have to be good. Just decent. I'll take all zeros. Although I would imagine our first line is going to be pretty good with Malkin. And yeah, okay. Saw that coming. You know what? I might actually just leave Voracek there. That's not a bad idea. My brain's all over the the map right now because I was just thinking like maybe I, I judge this draft too harsh maybe we will be good but then that made me think hmm now I'm thinking we're gonna be good so that means we're gonna be absolute trash so anyway our first line will be Ovi, Malkin, and Voracek our second line consists of Perron, Lawton, and Kalorn our bottom six I like it it's Barabanov, Howla, and Sanford and then Camp, Dickinson, and Lemieux defensively we got Muzzin and Latang. they get a zero which is fine as long as it's not a dash Savard and Schmidt get a plus one Susie and Labushkin get a zero goaltenders we got Ranta and Cal. I finally drafted the correct amount of defensemen in terms of handedness, so that is phenomenal. My first thought was to say obviously, but I don't know if it is obvious. Malkin might put up a lot of points here, but I'm gonna say Ovechkin gets the most points, and... I'm going to go bold and say he wins the Rocket Richard, but I'll say he gets 90 points. I think he's going to pop off. I'll say we just barely make it into the playoffs and we get like 44 wins. That's my assumption. So yeah, I don't know. I really don't know what to expect. There's only one way to find out though, and that's by doing. Again, go ahead, get yours locked up here or comment it, whatever you prefer, and see if you were even close to being correct. We start off the year 0-3, not exactly ideal, but we came back here. I'm not phased by this weak start because it could just turn on a dime. Is that even a saying? Do I just have a Rickyism? Okay, I think it's almost time to press the panic button. The streaky simulation engine returns. We went on a massive winning streak, finally brought it close again, and then went on a massive L streak immediately after that. We did pull it back here, but we were last in the division for a good amount of time. I'm gonna go ahead and keep our current trading block. Enter the trade deadline. We've been on a massive roll, so I don't want to change anything up because we finally stirred up some momentum here. Doesn't look like as much I'd want to grab from this trade deadline anyway. So let's get out of here. We're going to have to have a post trade deadline for the ages if we want to stand a chance. Here is a blockbuster trade. Petrie, Merrill, and Larson, plus a third actually, headed to Washington in exchange for a first, that guy, and Bjorklin. You know what? I'm going to give it a go. LaRue. That's, that's wrong. Oh, our division's actually very, very tight. So maybe we do stand a chance here. Come on, a three game losing streak. You're really going to do that to me right now. Let's dig deep, boys. Legs feed the wolves. Are you kidding me? I'm pretty sure if we won any of these games, any of these games, and we would have been in. We finished with 39 wins. So actually... Yeah, we would have, because we would have had the better row. So we would have been above Chicago. Out of the last four games there, if we won one of those. <laughs> Actually, all we had to really do was in our last two games, one of them we could have lost in overtime, and we still would have been in. Buffalo wins the President's Trophy with 112 points and 52 dubs. They had quite the team, apparently. We finished 21st in the league. Chicago finished 19th, and they got in. Just barely, might I add. Here's Buffalo's lines. They got Huberdeau playing with Tavares and Sillinger. Then they got Kairou, Bergeron, and Garland. That is a second line, all right. They got Mike Smith, so that explains quite a bit right there. Sergachev and Carlo defensively, and then their third line, Mott Hayes. Kravstov, I don't know. I don't get why they're so good. The Panthers are last. They had Rust, Giroux, and Konechny, Mantha, Thomas, Mikheyev, Krauss, Wenberg, Blackwell. They had Spencer, Knight, in net, backed up by DeSmith, Fox, and Ekholm. That's not a bad team. I don't understand the simulation engine. I really don't. Malkin had 91 points. Ovi had 86. He only had 36 goals, which is a little disappointing. Kalorn had 62. Voracek only put up 60. What's going on there? Latang at 61, same with Perron. Our goalies kind of let us down here. Ranta went 31, 21, and 5 with two shutouts, only a 905 and a 285, and Cal just could not get it done. Robin Leonard had the most dubs. He played 74 games, 40, 30, and 4 with three shutouts and a 912, a 918 from Hellebuck, and that appears to be the best on the front page here. 917 from Katahat. Yossi led defenseman with 73 points. Hughes got 71. Miro and Latang. There we go. Both put up 61. Matthews gets the Art Ross, and by the looks of it, he will also get the Rocket Richard, but 
no one broke 50 this year. Nate Mack and Stone both had 94 points, and then we had Marchie with 92, same with Tavares, Point, and Keller. I can't believe we didn't make it. That was coming down to the wire. Once again, Tampa just proving that even in a fantasy draft, they are still good. Rantanen led the league. He had a 14.9 shooting percentage, a 22 shooting percentage for Matthews down there. So Rantanen had 26. We got 21 from Gallagher, Kunin, and Line. 20 for Hall. Seth Jones led defenseman with 17. We got 16 from Shabbat. What overall is he? 88? Yeah, that checks out. Spurgeon, 14. Martinez, 13. Flower played unbelievably. A 944 save percentage, 171 GAA, 16, 4 0 with five playoff shutouts. And once again, I will just kind of go through the team awards and individual awards real quick here. There you have it. It is time to check out the playoff tree, see how it all went down without Smashville, unfortunately. A 4 1 Stanley Cup final. Not fun. Tampa just dominated. They went 4 and 2. 4 4 and 2 in the conference finals. But other than that, the <laughs> other teams could only get one game out of them, and Detroit couldn't even get that. To be fair, San Jose didn't go to seven either until, you know, they got to the Stanley Cup finals and got wrecked. Well, anyway, our team was full of plugs, apparently, and we just couldn't get it done. We tried, but yeah. I'd say that the inverse was definitely more successful. However, I wouldn't really say that drafting wise, this one was that much harder. I thought it would be, but turned out to not be the case. Well, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you soon.